Alright guys, I know it's been a while, but i um, back here with my hand tool, one of my favorite tools that I have. And I'm going to show you my setup with my uh, tablet. It works pretty good. I have a little adapter for the USB. Just loaded the drivers and uh, the program. And yeah, it's pretty easy. I'm running Windows 8. It doesn't seem to have any problems. So today what I want to show you guys is uh, a neat trick that I learned actually while on the PicoScope website. How you can look at a secondary ignition without needing a secondary ignition probe. So what I'm going to do is I have one channel hooked on with my 20 to 1 attenuator and I'm going to hook it up to the control wire for, this, for the number one ignition coil. So inside this ignition coil there is a power which is the gray wire and there's a ground which is the black wire. There's always a power and there's always a ground. Inside of here there's a transistor. That transistor is controlled by this purple wire. So if I back probe this purple wire here, we should see a square wave on the scope, which is the control for the, sorry, one moment. I don't think I have this back probe correctly. There it is, okay. I actually have it on a very, very short screen so you can hardly see it. Let me make the screen a little wider and you'll see it. Five millisecond screen, there's a square wave. So, when the when the uh, the voltage is zero, the coil is not turned on. When the voltage is twelve, or here is actually uh, five. The no, I'm sorry. This would be yeah. When the voltage is five, the coil is turned on, and here is where the spark occurs. Now, how can I prove that? What I'm going to do is I have my second channel hooked up, no attenuator whatsoever. It's just a simple wire with the ground, and the end is just uh, like a little uh, four millimeter banana plug. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along the coil and see if I can find a sweet spot. And if you go onto the scope, you can actually see what looks like a secondary ignition pattern. See that? Now I'm going to go in for a little more detail. I'm going to change the time base from five milliseconds per division to, let's do one millisecond per division. Let's see what, how that looks. Look at that. There's a perfect, perfect, perfect secondary ignition. It's not as good as you would get from, let's say, clamping a wire on a distributor type, but it's pretty good. Let's see if I can pause it. Let's play it again. See if I can pause it to get a better one. That's not a bad one right there. So here, you can see, if you, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, I guess you can. Here's the on time of the coil. That's the yellow trace here. Let's see if I can move this blue trace up a little bit. There we go. This is the dwell time. This is the on time of the coil. The coil will not fire until the transistor shuts off. And here we have a nice spark line. I mean, here we have the nice uh, ignition spike, and here we have the spark line. Since we have about one millisecond per division, it looks like it's about a 1.3, 1.4 millisecond spark. And here we can see it's a very good spark line. If it were to go straight up like this, let's say, that would indicate a lean misfire, or perhaps a very hashy, or maybe even an almost no spark line whatsoever would indicate no spark, bad spark plug, bad coil, what have you. So yeah, this is how you can get a secondary ignition without even needing any fancy tools. All you need, you don't even need to have the attenuator or even the, uh, the this, uh, this pin plug. All you really need is a brown and a lead and a little bit of patience and good luck. And that is easy.